morning, God's people. Good morning, God's people. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad every time I have the opportunity to enter into these doors. The scripture said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. So to all of you who are here today and all of those who are watching us online, we greet you in the awesome and matchless name of Jesus. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of the blessings that we are the recipients of. Mm -hmm. Now, oh God, as we enter into this worship experience, we pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will have full control. Lord, we yield to the authority of the Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way, God, so that every participant in this worship experience and every person here and every person online will feel a move of the Holy Spirit that will inspire them to be better and to do better in all of their ways. Oh, God, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Again, we're so grateful to have all of you uh, here today, and uh, we are blessed to have uh, Minister Kendra Coleman, who's going to come now and bless us uh, with a selection, and then we're going to move further into this worship experience. <laughs>
of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came up against me, the heat of my flesh, that, and they stumbled and fell. Go an army encamp all around me. My heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing. Somebody say one thing. Okay. I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life. And behold, behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, yeah. how many know we're running into trouble every now and then? Yeah. He shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. I said tabernacle praise. He, he shall hide me, yes. He shall set me out on a rock. So we thank God and we praise God for that selection that uh, just puts us, uh, gets the soil ready for the seed that we can go into this word. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you again for this awesome privilege to be in this place that you have provided. Oh God, that we might uh, just go down into your word and hopefully, oh God, garner some pearls of wisdom that will strengthen us, strengthen us in our everyday living. Oh God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, my everything, my all in all. Amen? amen. And amen. Amen. You know, in spite of everything that we're going through, in spite of the COVID-19 and uh, all of the civil unrest, we can say beyond the shadow of a doubt that God is still blessing us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are there any witnesses in the building? Are any of those who are watching us online that, that can be a witness of the goodness of the Lord? You know, it's like one of the original uh, LeBron James had the, the first time he was in Cleveland, the first time around. You know, he had his arms stretched, and there was a caption that said, we are all witnesses. Well, you know, as a believer, we are definitely witnesses, and we are the recipients of the goodness of the Lord. So we got a reason to celebrate. We got a reason to rejoice. We've got a reason to throw a Holy Ghost party. But listen, I've got even more good news. If we keep on doing what we're doing, if we keep on fasting, if we keep on praying, if we keep on reading and studying God's Word and applying it in our everyday living, God's Word declares in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, but as it is written, that means it's in the book, so it's got to come to pass. All right, it says, I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love. Amen. I just put it like this. You ain't seen nothing yet. As good as it's going for you now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But listen, if by chance you're not in a celebratory mood because you currently happen to be uh, maybe discouraged, depressed, disgruntled, dejected, disheartened, or just plain disappointed about where you are in your life right now, then I believe this message ought to be a real encouragement for you. Or maybe you're not down and out, but you know God has something better for you. Well, this message ought to inspire you also. So pray with me as we get into this message on today, simply entitled, A Message of Hope. All right, all right. A Message of Hope. The foundational text is found in Romans 5. I read verses 3 through 5. Romans 5, verses 3 through 5. It says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about the Holy Spirit that Romans 5 and 3 say has been given to us in just a moment. But first let's deal with this statement that the Apostle Paul makes that we can rejoice in our sufferings. Amen. And he said we can do that because we are people of hope. Well, you know, I hear you, Apostle Paul, but how can you expect us to have hope when we look around and everything around us seems to look hopeless? Well, I for one, uh, I tend to agree with Paul's assessment that we can have joy and, and rejoice in the midst of suffering because every challenge that we face it causes us to do these three things it causes us number one to rely on god's presence number two to rely on god's provision and number three to rely on god's power 
Let's briefly examine these three factors. The first one, challenges cause us to rely on God's presence. You know, rejoicing in suffering does not mean that we celebrate when good news comes. No, that's not what it means. But it does mean that we believe that even during our suffering, God is doing a redemptive work. And this word redemptive means that, listen, God does not waste any hurtful or disappointing event that occurs in your life. Don't miss this. God uses every adverse situation, every adverse circumstance you experience to shape and build you into the likeness of Jesus. Because when we go through something, we often pray and seek God more earnestly than at other times. I know personally, my greatest times of growth have been when I've used up all the resources I know to use. And this leads me to do nothing but cry, Father, I stress my hand to do. No, no other help I know. So God, in his infinite wisdom, he uses our suffering to make us rely on his presence. The psalmist David write in Psalms 23 and 4, Yea, though I walk, help me, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They come for me. Listen, David doesn't fear because he relies on God's presence and that brings him comfort. So no matter how dark it gets, as you walk through your valley of the shadow of death, you gotta remember, here's a nugget for you, for there to be a shadow, there has to be a light. Oh, oh let that marinate. Let me let that marinate for you for a minute. Look, look, look. I don't know where or, or what your valley of the shadow of death happens to be, but I do know the light that is walking along with you in that valley. Hallelujah. And another psalm, David reveals that one of the reasons for his joy is that because he knows that he is forgiven. Psalms 31 and 1 from the NIV version says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sins are covered. You know, we can't determine God's love for us based solely on our good or our bad circumstances because that would produce some faulty results. We determine God's love for us based on what Jesus did on the cross. Right. He hung his head and, head and died for you and for me so all of our sins are covered by the blood. I don't know about you, but I'm happy about that today. Thank you, Lord. He, here's an element number two. Challenges cause us to rely on God's provision. In 2 Corinthians 12 and 7, the Apostle Paul reveals that he suffered from a thorn in his flesh. Listen, God allowed this medical malady to inflict Paul even though he asked him to remove it three times. Three times, three times he asked him, but listen, even with the thorn, somebody said with the thorn, Paul became the most successful and the most celebrated apostle in the Bible. So that tells me no matter what we're suffering through, we can deal with it and we can be successful even with it. Somebody ought to say amen to that. So in our current situation, even when we face adversity, with your thorn, God is saying that my grace yes, sir. is sufficient. Yes, sir. Even if, when we feel weak or burdened, God will empower us to be stronger than we've ever been before. The hell that you're going through right now might be the very circumstance that God uses to take you to a whole new That's level. Right. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Here's the third thing. Challenges all also cause us to rely on God's power. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 me from the uh, English Standard Version says, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes. Let me ask, what is your weakness today? Oh, Lord. What is your weakness? Lord, Maybe Lord. it's a child. Maybe it's a grandchild that, that didn't turn out the way you thought he or she would. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's a spouse that just won't stop right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a wishy-washy friend. Or maybe it's a job situation that has gone awry. Maybe it's a medical diagnosis that has alarmed you. Or maybe, like the Apostle Paul, you're also experiencing insults and persecutions and one hardship after another. Whatever it is, Paul says that I will boast in those things because when I'm weak, glory to God, 
then I'm strong. The power of Christ rests on us. Here's a nugget for you. The greater the enemy comes at you, the greater the Holy Spirit rises up in you. Uh -huh. Let me say that again. The greater the enemy comes at you, the greater the Holy Spirit rises up in you. In other words, God will always grant you the strength to deal with whatever you encounter. Right. Glory to God. I'm happy about that and nobody else is. Maybe you're hearing voices that telling you to quit, to give up, to throw in the towel. But I, I encourage you, please don't stop because the greater the attack is against you, yes, yes. the greater Christ is in you. But you have to rely on God's presence, His provision, and His power. Wow. Now let's talk for a few minutes about the Holy Spirit that Romans 5 and 3 says was given to us. In the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Listen, the disciples were in this upper room, having been self-quarantined, if you will, for about 50 days uh, to keep themselves isolated from the societal viruses of a sensitive world. Look, by divine direction from the master physician, they were assembled there waiting for something special to take place. Then on that 50th day, they heard this sound like a mighty rushing wind. Then the Holy Spirit makes his incredible entrance into this new dispensation that he is now ushering the church into. Mm -hmm. Then after this perplexing response from the crowd, because they were from different parts of the country and all of them heard the, the word being given to them in their own native language. After all this happened, Peter, y'all remember Peter, don't you? Yeah. The one who denied you, the Peter. He stood up and preached such a powerful message of hope that 3,000 souls came to the church. And all this happened after Jesus, their leader, had been defamed. He had been humiliated. He had been shamed and finally crucified. So they were waiting there in this upper room. And this was an extremely trying time for them. They had been dispersed and, and pretty much disbanded. Oh, but when the Holy Spirit arrives, yes, he right. transformed them from a spirit of de dejection to ambassadors of hope. And this is what I want to talk to you about today, exercising your status yes. as ambassadors of hope in the midst of everything that is going on. Mm -hmm. You know, with the resurgence of this virus, coupled with all of the civil unrest across the country, as far west as California, as far east as Florida, we cannot afford, listen to me, to be duped into becoming ambassadors of fear. All right. Ambassadors of hatred or ambassadors Help of me. retaliation. Right. Help me. In this life, you have a choice of how you will That's respond right. Right. to the situations and circumstances that confront you. <laughs> listen, remember your response is your responsibility. Look, these three options are always available in every situation you face. Number one, you can be an optimist about a situation. Number two, you can be a pessimist about a situation. Or number three, you can become a strategist. An optimist hopes for the better, while a pessimist doesn't even consider better. So I choose, and I recommend this choice for everybody, that you become a strategist and here's why. A strategist not only looks favorable at a situation that others may not be able to visualize anything positive about, a strategist also makes plans for the better. And this is what we must do now while we are quarantined. We must plan our work and work our plan so that when we come back together, we will be better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we make our plans, we all must do what we need to do to strengthen our minds and our bodies. We've got to strengthen the physical man. 
with a healthy diet and, and an exercise regimen that's suitable for you. And the spiritual man also needs a daily dose of nutrition which comes from the Word of God. Listen, so for our own protection and for our own well-being, we must be extremely careful about what we ingest. And I'm not referring to food only. I'm talking about ingesting too much of this negative information that comes from the news reports. Now listen, certainly we want to stay abreast of what's going on. But listen, if we internalize too much of that stuff, hear me what I'm saying now, we will become cowardly instead of confident. We will become bitter instead of better. So you need to understand that ingesting a whole lot of negativity, it will affect your disposition, it will affect your health, and it will affect your decision making. Because when you look around, there seems to be an abundance of hopelessness all around us. You know, it's a reality that we live in a world that we are bombarded with negativity on the news. Most of what you see is devastation, depression, disaster, disappointments, and even death. But we have a revelation from the Word of God. And the revelation is that we are people of hope. Let's use this definition of hope for today's message. Hope is a firm unwavering, positive expectation based on the believability of a credible source. Let me repeat that again for those who might be taking notes. Hope is a firm, unwavering, positive expectation based on the believability of a credible source. So when we talk about hope, we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that our hope should never be shaken because that? we have the ultimate credible source, which for the believer is the Word of God. Hope is important to my faith. And I know this because Hebrews 11 and 1 said, now faith. Somebody said, now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we see right here in this scriptural definition of faith, there is this hope element. Hope is also important to my faithfulness. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9 and 10b, the worker plows in hope, and he wants to be a partaker of that hope. Here's what I mean. In other words, the person plowing, they're not just doing it for the fun of it. The person plowing expects to reap the benefit and be a partaker of the harvest. So hope is important to my faith. Hope is important to my faithfulness. And hope is also important to my fortitude. Because hope is like an anchor. And it keeps me stable even under pressure. Listen, there's also an empowerment factor in hope. Consider this example. There, there were scientists who, who did this experiment that they were conducting. Uh, they were trying to prove something about endurance. So they, take, they took this mouse and, and they put him in a tank of water and they just put him there and allowed him to just swim, keep swimming, swimming, swimming until he couldn't swim anymore. And after a certain period of time, the mouse gave up. The mouse died. The mouse drowned. So they took another mouse with about the same physical char characteristics and they put him in the same tank of water and they allowed him to swim, 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 swim. But when they saw him reaching the point of exhaustion that the other mouse had reached and, and drowned, they took him out of the water. They rescued him and sat him on the side. Now after they allowed him to rest for a minute, they put him back in the water and allowed him to keep swimming, swimming, swimming. But, but when he got to that point, where he exhausted and gave it up before, he kept on going. He kept on going because now he had hope. If I just keep on going a little while longer, somebody gonna come and rescue me. And they did it over and over and over. And every time the mouse went up, look at further and a little bit further because he knows if I hold on and hold out, come on now, somebody gonna come and see about it. I, this is the point you gotta get. If you just hold on and hold out, you're going through a tough stretch right now. And rescue us. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. The, the scripture reminds us in Isaiah 40 and 31 they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run 
and not be weary. They shall walk and not fail. So there is an empowerment factor in my hope that keeps me flowing, that keeps me working, that keeps me on point, that keeps me keeping on because our hope is built on the ability of God to work things out on our behalf. So our hope is built on the infallibility, the irrefutability, and the immutability of God's work. And the Bible says that in Matthew 34 and 25, heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of God will not pass away. In other words, let me say it like this. God's word ain't going nowhere. It's going to always be right here. So our hope is built on the account of God's witnesses. Revelation 12 and 11 a says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And you know, this is why I, I strive to be transparent when I'm sharing testimonies to encourage you to maintain your hope. The testimonies that I give regarding any mistakes that I made early in life, they are definitely not to glorify any wrongdoing that I've done. Any negative occurrence in my life that I share is to let you know that if God could forgive me and use me as a vessel to, speak a, to preach a word of hope to his people, then he can use you yeah. with any past indiscretion you had if you repent and if you make yourself available to him. Here's another thing about my testimony. They are not to pump me up for anything of significance that I have done. Because I realize that all that I am, all that I've done, all that I ever hope to be is but by the grace of God. So hope is based on the ability of God's word to work. It's based on the accuracy of God's word. It's based on the account of God's witnesses. And watch this. It's based on the appreciation of God's wants to. Wants to. Say, what's God's wants to? That's right. God wants to help us. <laughs> God wants to bless us. God wants to see us prosper in every area of our lives. Glory to God. So our hope is based upon the scriptures because the scriptures have established principles recorded in the word of God that we honor and trust. So because of these biblical principles, my hope rejects any erroneous philosophy that may come up. When there is a principle or, or, or a philosophy that goes contrary to the word of God, I don't even consider that an option. I, I get rid of it right away. Because my hope has a resolve that is sustained through persecution. And that's important because right in the midst of your hope, persecution will raise its ugly head. Yeah. See, that's the devil's MO. That's the devil's modus operandi. That's, that's how the devil operates. So in the midst of chaos and confusion, in the midst of troubles and trials, problems and predicaments, we must remain steadfast yes. in the knowledge that we are ambassadors of hope. In Romans 1, 16 and 17, we hear the Apostle Paul declare, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, but it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. But if we back up to Romans 1 and 15, Paul says, So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. In other words, Paul was saying he was ready to be a messenger of hope to anybody who would listen. Look, when we look throughout the scriptures, we see that God also has a pattern. He has an MO of how he operates. And, and here's a pattern. In dark and gloomy times, God will recruit an ambassador of hope to proclaim what thus said the Lord. Second Chronicles 16 and 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those heart who are loyal to him. God is always looking for someone who will be boldly and unashamedly proclaim a message of hope even when things appear hopeless. Here's a few examples. He recruited Abraham as a messenger of hope to preach a message of God, to, to, of God's consciousness to a godless generation. He recruits Moses as a messenger of hope to a nation that has been enslaved for over 400 years. He recruits David as a messenger of hope 
to an army that has been gripped by fear and traumatized by a ferocious giant. He recruits Gideon as a messenger of hope to preach a message to poor people who were hiding in caves. He recruits the woman at the well as a message of hope to her community that the long-awaited Messiah was ready to transform their lives. He recruited a handmaid as a message of hope to the Syrian general Naaman to let him know that healing for his leprous condition was possible. He recruited Nehemiah as a messenger of hope to bring revival and construction to a downcast nation. Well, guess what? Now God has recruited me. He has recruited you. He has recruited other heralds of the good news to preach a word of health and wholeness to a world that's been overwhelmed by a global pandemic. He wants us to preach a word of restoration a word of reconciliation, a word of revival to a, a nation that is experiencing civil unrest to the degree that we've never experienced it before. But let me tell you something that's exciting. God always rewards messengers of hope. Yes, Lord. He rewards us with the blessed assurance that he's going to be with us every step of the way. Yeah, he rewards us with increased anointing. He equips us with his word and he empowers us with the holy boldness to be successful at whatever task he assigns us to do. Listen, he also rewards us with assets or promotions. Yes. For example, after Nehemiah built the wall, he became governor. Yes. After Gideon rises up and conquers his enemies, he's, re he's rewarded with the gold and jewels from the kings of the Midianites who he conquered. Look at Joshua and Caleb's situation. When everyone said they couldn't possess the land, they said, not only are we able, we're well able to over and take the land. So because of their faithfulness, they were the only two men from their generation rewarded to go in and possess the land. Look at David, when he was still just a shepherd boy, he slays the giant with a slingshot and a rock, and he is re rewarded later by becoming king. I'm telling you that God always rewards messengers of hope yeah. who remain faithful. Yeah. Let, let me show you now an exhortation of hope by examining Ezekiel's vision of dry bones. The, the prophet says, uh, the Bible says that the prophet Ezekiel was in the spirit and he sees himself in the midst of a valley of dry bones. Uh -huh. Disjointed bones. Disconnected bones. Disorganized bones. It looks like a major uh, uh, predicament of hopelessness. And when we look at our nation today, it also looks like a major predicament of hopelessness. Hopeless because of COVID-19 pandemic. Hopeless because of economic depression. Hopeless because of civil unrest. Hopeless because of systemic racism. Hopeless because of police profiling. Hopeless because there's zero leadership coming from the White House. Nothing but absolute, unfiltered absurdity coming from the president day in and day out. I tell you, it's a depressing, sad situation. But let me get back to Ezekiel because talking about the president just makes me itch. I, 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 just, get, I just get irritated like, like never before. Y'all pray for your pastor. Y'all pray for your pastor. But listen. Even though he irritates me, I'm still praying for him. Yeah, yeah. Because God can do. Come on, now. God can still work that situation out. But, but, so, but let me move on. In the midst of this valley of dry bones, the master asked this probing question, can these bones live? In other words, he was asking Ezekiel, is there any hope for this hopeless looking situation? But listen to this glorious possibility of hope in Ezekiel's response. He said, Lord, you know. You know. Lord, you know. Listen to me, saying, when it comes to the transformation of sorry-looking situation, we have the consolation of knowing that God has a last word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We might not know how things are going to be resolved, but our siren God knows because nothing takes them by surprise. Now let's see the mandate of, of the proclamation of hope. God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to those dry bones. In other words, God has recruited Ezekiel as a messenger of hope in what appears to be a hopeless situation. God even told Ezekiel, this is what I want you to say. 
I know you've not heard, uh, Reverend Rick, I've heard many preachers, uh, preach this passage uh, about, and they say Ezekiel uh, over and over, say, oh, drop off, and they get into, oh, <laughs> drop off. They hear the, the word of the Lord. They, they really get it on, and by the time they get done, everybody snap, me included. I snap, oh, drop off, here. And they say that over and over and over again, and the bones start to come together. But look, that is what God told Ezekiel to say, but that's not all he told him. Now, he told him specific. He said, this is what I want you to tell the Lord. Look, start in Ezekiel 37, 5 and 6. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you. And you will become life. I will attach tendons to you. And make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you. And you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So listen, God told Ezekiel specifically what he needed to say to this seemingly hopeless situation in this valley of dry bones. And listen to me, this is the same thing we must do today. We must speak specifically what thus said the Lord. Listen, don't just develop a catchphrase or just come up with something trendy and run with it. No, 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 no. You got to declare what thus said the Lord. And as Ezekiel prophesied, then there was this manifestation of the power of hope. The power of God hit that back, and those bones started to come together. From the toe bone to the head bone. Y'all remember that song back in the day? Them bone, them bone, them dry bone. Look, every one of them, every one of them came together. All the bones came together because Ezekiel prophesied over them just as he was instructed. So listen to me today, top partners and friends. I prophesy over you today in the name of Jesus that as God's people, as his ambassadors of hope in the world, in the midst of this global pandemic, in the midst of all the societal and economic injustices, in the midst of racism and discrimination, in the midst of partisan politic, political shenanigans, I prophesy that you will be empowered to stand strong, to declare and display a message of hope by your words and your deeds in the midst of sin and senseless day, in the midst of chaos and confusion, in the midst of problems and predicaments, your words and actions will cause a revival of hopefulness that inspires people to rise up in the workplace, to rise up on school campuses, to rise up in your communities, to rise up in the malls and the grocery store, to rise up in government, rise up in your home. And when this happens, then will come the magnificent phrase of hopefulness, and we can sing together, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest phrase, but holy, lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sick and sick. This is the hope I have. And this is the hope I have for God's people. That we will be victorious. If you receive this word, give God praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will be victorious. Come what may, we will be victorious. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 As the invitation to discipleship is now extended, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you're already a Christian and you want to become a local, remote, virtual, or honorary member of the Tabernacle Praise Christian Church, send your contact information and or any questions you might have about our ministry to labhill60 at gmail.com. Again, that's labhill60 at gmail.com. Or you can text it to 901 319 5588. Again, I'd like to thank all of our top partners and friends for your continued financial support to this ministry. For others who might want to support us, these are the methods by which you can give. You can support Top with your giving four different ways. Via Cash App, our ID is dollar sign T O P C C. Four three two five. Texting top to seven seven nine seven seven. 
using the top app to access PushPay by clicking the giving icon. And finally, you can mail us your gifts at 4325 Hacks Cross Road, Memphis, Tennessee 38125. Back to you, Pastor Nate. Well, this concludes our service for today. As always, it is my prayer that through the ministry of song and the ministry of the spoken word, we all have received something here today that will strengthen us in our spiritual walk. So let us receive the final benediction. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Did everyone say amen? Amen. And amen. God bless until next week. This is it. Pastor Nathan, be blessed. Thank you.